Hello and welcome to News Click. Today we're going to discuss the 1984 riots that took place against the Sikhs in Delhi and other parts of the country. We have with us Uma Chakravarti, who was involved in the Nagarik Ekta Manch with the aftermath of the riots. Uma, the history of 1984 has been discussed a number of times, mm. but the wounds still remain. Mm. And we as a society or as a nation have not really addressed the mass crimes that were committed at the time against the Sikh community. <coughs> yeah, um, yeah. Um, absolutely. Uh, but actually, more than the Nagrik Ekta Manch, I was involved with the PUDR, because I was a, a member of the PUDR. And it's in that capacity that I first went out uh, into the camps and, you know, to Sultanpuri. Uh, we, that's how some of that early evidence around the complicity of the state in, um, in, the, in the carnage began to come out. And as you might recall, um, it's led to the publication of the uh, famous booklet, uh, the black book called Who Are the Guilty? And that was the work of the PUDR. And I would like to emphasize that because uh, at this point of time, civil rights organizations, democratic rights organizations are all being treated as, um, you know, in a sense, almost anti-national because they, they are uncomfortable for the state. Uh, but in reality, we are the conscience keepers of, the, of our nation and our people. So uh, that's a record I'd like to put down there. And that, I think, leads us to uh, the wounds are just, wounds are particularly um, uh, raw because justice has never been done. And the whole search for justice, which is actually, if you look at the report that we put out, um, it was an attempt to try and show you that they, uh, that uh, a commission of inquiry would should be appointed to examine what actually had gone wrong and in a sense fix responsibility fix responsibility of how uh, the carnage could take place for those uh, number of uh, uh, days with no intervention uh, so in that sense i think the rawness of the wounds has remained because justice has not uh, uh, been done to the community as a whole and so this the sense of and i must say that this justice the search for justice then takes a long convoluted history uh, because it's not only that there was a demand for commission of inquiry and there were twists and turns you know uh, um, PUDR and other organizations actually went to court asking for a commission of inquiry that PUCL and PUDR that was the bench was actually changed Rajinder Sachar was the, the one hearing that petition he was changed at the last minute so that you wouldn't get a progressive uh, you wouldn't get an admission of the of the case, and it took its own. So many commissions of inquiry, including the, um, including on the police. So six police officials, for instance, were indicted by the Kusum Lata. They appointed the commission, and the Kusum Lata Mittal actually indicted six police policemen. But nothing happened to them. So in a sense, the wounds which were raw in eighty four began to congeal because. Uh, justice, there was was no, justice was denied. So in a sense, it was the first big um, massacre in which impunity was, um, imp you know, in a sense, the state created this system of impunity by refusing to concede uh, the basics that any civilized, constitutionally governed society should have. You know, there is an attempt to make this what about tree. So if you take 2002 Gujarat riots, there, there is a section, the ruling party today will refer to 1984. Mm -hmm. But the reality of it is that 2002, 1984, all of these are blots on our uh, nation. Yeah. And we need to fight all of them. Absolutely. And I am uh, uh, incredibly tired and offended uh, by the fact that you use one to cancel out the other. Now, the entire political rhetoric, right from the time of, uh, uh, well, it, it, it didn't start in 84, because in 84, they were simply stonewalling the justice. But once 2002 happened, 84 became the, the reason for 
why you would dismiss the call for justice in 2002. So, the f infamous uh, debate in parliament in which George Fernandez actually made some very irresponsible remarks about, so what's new about rapes, you know, it's, it's existed. They had to be even excised from the uh, records from the, the records because it was so offensive. But using 2000, 1984 to cancel out the responsibility for 2002, this rhetoric between and the, this conversation that goes on between these two uh, governments uh, is denies the fact that there is a large number of us who have stood against any form of denial of justice. And we have stood for the uh, constitutional values, for the rights of Indian citizens to live in their society safely. So, at the end of the day to make it a slanging match between these two governments is the most offensive thing that I can think of, you know. And it is something that we have to resist. Uh, uh, you see it even in TV debates. The other day there was a discussion of the RBI and the institutional failure. This is on the 31st evening and it, BJP, it has no connection even. But the BJP immediately says, who is responsible for uh, institutional failure? The Congress and 84. So, 84, 5 days, 10 days around 30, around uh, 31st to the 3rd becomes simply a slanging match. And so, more than that, it becomes a license to commit any number of crimes today. That seems to be more than argument. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the impunity just gets worse and worse because at the end of the day, who who... I, I want to actually bring up here uh, uh, one of the interviews that uh, we had done for this book that Nandita Haksar and I compiled, which is an oral history of 1984 called The Daily Riots, Three Days in the Life of a Nation. Uh, it's a, it's one of the interviews was, was with this man called Panda Singh. Panda Singh was a Labanya Sikh and Labanya Sikhs were the ones who got really slaughtered in in, in Delhi because they lived in the resettlement colonies. The poor. The poor. The poor and they were actually not from Punjab at all. They were Sindhi, Sindhi migrants from Sindh into and he told his story like this, you know, that is displacements, displacement. So, in 1947, they come from Sindh, there is no trouble in Sindh, but they come because, you know, there has been this exchange of populations as it were. They try, they, they come to Bombay, then they come to uh, Rajasthan and finally they come to Delhi and here they move around till they get these bits of land 25 acres 25 um, sorry uh, 25 yards where they built their little juggies and square, square yeah. yards where they, they, and they thought that now they had settled and actually he very, with very movingly he described how it is Mrs. Indira Gandhi who gave he treats it as Mrs. Mrs. Gandhi Panditayan ne humko zameen di and they thought this is the end for us. And that's the place. So they were Congress voters. You know, they had nothing to do with. They are the ones who got targeted. He lost two of his sons. He, at the end of the day, he actually um, uh, he. Uh, and yet, this is a man who uh, made two observations, which are very powerful as far as I'm concerned. And I would like future generations to know this. There was this usual, you know, sort of rumor or uh, attribution of guilt to particular communities. So, there was this thing, that we didn't do it, we And Panda Singh said something I have never forgotten. He said, Sabne mara. Banyo ne mara, Brahmano ne mara. Jisne kabhi chuha ne mara, unhone bhi mara. So, he actually distributed the guilt onto, he was not going to go into the sectarian stuff. And the other thing that he said very powerfully was that I, I don't I don't believe in retaliation. I do not believe in revenge. So the transistor bombs had uh, what had taken place at that time. He said, "This is not the way to go. I want justice from the courts. Kanuni star pe hume nyaay mile. That's what we're looking for. We will get closure only if you get kanu. The, the law gives you justice. The, so that is the question today. I mean." Is the law going to give justice to people or is it instead going to, um, you know, sort of facilitate a process of impunity uh, which means that the guilty will never get punished. And Particularly today, yeah. when we are seeing lynchings happen at the scale, yeah. we are also seeing that uh, FIRs are being launch, launched 
against the victims and their families. Absolutely. And they, even if people have been taken to court on some of these cases, mm. they are garlanded when they are quote unquote yeah. uh, set free by the court yeah. because no evidence has been provided by the uh, the police. Yeah. And this particular UP today, yeah. where just in a recent incident you had 200 people, uh, FIRs against 200 uh, of the yeah. community which has been attacked yeah. and no fire against the people who have attacked the community. Yeah. So this is the kind of... Uh, well, actually, we tragically, uh, what we are being reminded of is that state power determines whether action is going to be taken or not and it will be taken against whom it is going to be taken. And our struggle really has to be to put, uh, you know, sort of democratic, secular, um, opinion in place or, uh, uh, or uh, um, you know, uh, um, enable, that. enable that process to complete because uh, the, the, the state must be accountable to its people and we must stand for all sections of those who are being targeted. Some of us actually have to carry the responsibility uh, more than anybody else because uh, otherwise where are these people going to go looking for justice? So it is the most depressing time when you find that uh, people are being lynched and they get away. And at the end of the day, here are these women, you know, and across, the, and I'm reminded of the, uh, the widows in 1984. I'm reminded of the women in, uh, and the, what they suffered in 2002. And I'm now looking at these women who are now left to hold their, uh, somehow keep their families going. and. It's the struggle to survive and to seek justice. It's a terrible, and it's in that context that I believe that the, the recent judgment on Hashimpura is such an important judgment. So at the end of the day, 31 years, it's a huge amount of time, but at least today, Asya Begum can feel that the state gave her justice. And I, I can't tell you how significant that judgment is in terms of making us feel that yes, when the wheels of law can work and they, uh, they, can, they do provide us with the hope that hopefully we can all create a world in which that justice that they are entitled to will come to them. And extend to also the powerful people who shielded a lot of these criminals from 1984 oh, to today. Absolutely, absolutely. Thank you very much, Uma, for Thank being with us. Hope mm -hmm. that we can, you know, discuss this and other issues in the future. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and do visit our YouTube channel.